you to do something, just go touch about three people and just use his name and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father in Jesus' name, thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Every time we turn around, you keep on blessing us. Thank you for how you've already planned, not only today, but this week out. Thank you, God. Even months down the road, you've already ordered steps for us. And we give you praise because we know you know exactly what we need. So tonight we say have your way. Touch us again. Bring deliverance to our hearts and minds. That we might be what you desire. And we thank you. Send your word tonight. God you know I need your help. I'm just a regular old fella. But I need your help. Touch me tonight in my humanness God. Let your, let your super get on my natural. And work a wonder tonight, we pray. In the name of Jesus, and we give you thanks. Amen and amen. Will you turn to somebody and tell them you're in the right place at the right time? <laughs> oh, but they don't believe you. Turn to somebody else and tell them, I said you're in the right place. <laughs> Come on, prayer partners. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Please take your seats. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We certainly honor God for his goodness and his mercies. Allowing us to be here with my big brother tonight. Amen. Your jurisdictional prelate. But he's my brother. I thank God for him. Amen. And that's none other than Bishop Samuel Eigerhart. He is a man of great stature. Amen. Promise and certainly prowess. God has done so much in his life and through his life, and I'm thankful. I'm glad he's here tonight and doing well and looking good. And I saw him with this three piece on. I said, What? Bishop is so clean tonight. Amen. It looked like it fell all around him, too, because these fellas up here dressed up tonight. They're so glad to be here with him. I love your leader. <clears throat> he is an honest man. If you want the truth, call him. Now, if you want fluff, I got a few other names for you. But if you want, if you want the truth, give Bishop Samuel Eigerhart a call, and he will tell you exactly what's on his mind. Can I get a witness? Anybody been touched by his truth? <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. You're always kind to me. We love you. Appreciate you, and glad to be here with you. I count this an honor. Because you are a stellar jurisdiction. You know that though, don't you? Amen. You're a stellar jurisdiction. And certainly we thank God for, uh, for Bishop Green, Bishop Sturman, certainly Bishop Rowe. Love these men of God. They're great men and great representatives. And the administrative assistants that are here and uh, superintendents and pastors. Amen. Why don't you, if you got the best pastor in town, clap your hands for your pastor. Clap your hands. Sound like sound like greater community. My church in here. It's, uh, all that screaming going on. No. Thank you. God bless you. So glad for you, men of God and elders and each of you. And certainly to our supervisor. Amen. Bless you, supervisor. Ford. Bless you. Amen. And I certainly pray for you and your venture uh, with this tremendous leader and these great women of the Lord that assist you and work with you. Amen. God is good, right? Amen. I'm thankful. I certainly miss our former supervisor. We, we certainly pray. I mean, the rest of the soul and 
She was such a great woman of God too. So I know, I know that you've had great examples before you and your bishop is already bragging on you, amen. So thank you for your labor of love to our leader here and certainly to the district missionaries and first ladies and each and every one of you, all the officers, this tremendous music department. Amen. I don't have to bring a musician when I come here because y'all bad, y'all bad. Amen. When I get ready to preach, when I say something you like, just, you know, kind of let me hear something and see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. See. Oh, you know, when I say something you like, you know, if you don't like nothing, then get off the organ and let somebody else on. Amen. No, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm thankful to be here. My, um, our, our convention, our convocation actually is next week and in Memphis, Tennessee. And I don't know if you've heard or not, but um, we're working hard and the committee and our residing bishop has sent uh, some of us out to make sure that we can get back to Memphis, Tennessee for the Holy Convocation. Now hold on, I need to hear more claps than that now. Wait a minute. Amen. Uh, somewhere around 21, 22, 23, that's what we're working on and we're believing now that that's going to happen. Amen. But my jurisdictional convocation is in Memphis next week and uh, pray for us and certainly I'm glad to be here with you. My bookstore sent a few books and I'll be at the table back there I think after sober. My latest book is entitled The Multicultural Church, True or False? The Multicultural Church, True or False? And it's all right uh, that everyone has their culture, amen? But I got news for you, the black church still matters. Tell somebody the black church still matters now. Amen. We don't hate anybody and what all they do, but a culture, there's no such thing as multicultural, it's multiracial. Because a culture is a systemic practice, it's a controlling practice. And every institution, every organization has one culture running it at a time. You got me? It'll really bless you. Some great information in there. It's time to be filled. Book on the Holy Spirit. Uh, my uh, oldest son's book, uh, If Obama Had a Son, You've Been Planted, Filling God's House. Um, so many others, and they're right back there. I love writing, and I encourage others of you that are authors to write so that our other generations will have something that we can lead to them to know the essence of what we believe. Is that right? Let's go quickly to the Word of the Lord on tonight and share the truth of God with you. I know you're in for a great treat. Hey, Amen. You got my little brother Brian Nelson coming tomorrow, and my sister Joyce Rogers. I'm so glad I'm in front of them. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to uh, Genesis, if we could. Genesis, the book of beginnings. Genesis, chapter 32. Now, if you're in the middle of the Bible, you're lost. Go to the front. Genesis, you know. Now, y'all laughing, but see, this digital Bible has messed us up. Right? You had to thumb through it. You knew where everything was. Now, Obadiah can hardly ever be found again. Amen? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go, amen, and digitally search him out. So, Genesis 32, I'll take you to a couple places and we'll read and share the Word of God. Do you love the Word of God? Amen. Oh, I'll do your custom. I want to applaud the bishop for the great work he's doing to this facility. And, and you, amen, the renovations. Come on, give yourselves a hand. And I understand there's more to come, you know. I ain't trying to tell everybody, but I went to the bathroom, and there was a blue light coming out the water. I said, what the world? <laughs> so I know I'm clean, Amen. I know I got blue water. Ain't that something? <laughs> Ain't but one Bishop Samuel I got. I'm going to go home and get me some yellow water. No. Something, I don't know. Whatever. Genesis 32. Quick, quick, quick. You there? Look at verse 32 and a few of the following verses. When you get it, shout amen. Now, if y'all sit, then we're good. If you stand, then we'll do that. Which, which do you do? Whatever they tell you, all right, stand. All right. And Jacob was left, how? Alone, 
say that, and Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Jacob is praying, seeking God, and he encounters this man, which seems to be an angelic being, or even God himself, and he's wrestling with him. And he said, let me go. This is the angel saying, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Look at somebody and say, all night is too long for nothing. Verse 27. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. God help me to preach tonight. But Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Verse 29. And Jacob asked him, said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Father, give you thanks and pray, God's increase. We see this truth and a touch by it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Take your seats in the presence of Almighty God. And when he saw that he prevailed not there in verse 25, against him he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Father, give you thanks and pray God's increase in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk for a few moments because I know in life we're going to have some struggles. And I want to talk to you, if I could, tonight from these words. Who will you be after this struggle who will you be after this struggle don't look at me like you're not going through nothing look at someone and ask them who will you be after this struggle now it's apparent that every one of us here are going to have to go through something from time to time uh, how many of y'all are going through something right now? I knew you were in here. Have you ever heard many people, they utter the words, if I could just start over? Well, friends, that's what grace does. Grace gives us the opportunity to start over. I know we got a wave of people that are preaching grace, and I understand grace, because grace is amazing. But grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a license to repent. <laughs> Tell somebody that grace is a license to repent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grace gives you time to get it together. Somebody shout yes in here. So, so this is the essentialness of grace, the opportunity to start over. The ability to start over. The Bible says that his grace is sufficient. Meaning that his grace is enough for your worst encounter. Oh, I got to find who I'm talking to tonight. Somebody that's going through some difficulties in your life. Because the devil meant it for evil, but God minute for good. Is that right somebody? So all of us will have to go through something. Say that all of us will have to go through something. Amen somebody. So then it's reasonable for us to prepare ourselves for what's ahead. See God is well aware of the schedule of struggles in our lives. Oh my Lord. Say that God is well aware. Of the schedule, struggles in our lives. You got to know that all of us are scheduled for something. 
Is that right? Oh yeah, you may not have had no trouble. Don't be looking down on someone who has because your turn is coming. Yeah, maybe nobody's lied on you thus far, but guess what? They getting one together. Say amen, somebody. Nuts about tell them your turn is coming now. So don't be hating on someone that's going through. You don't know all the details anyway. Just pray for them. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, they have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be, to be tempted above that you're able, but will within the temptation make for you a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. Is that right? So God already knows what we're going through, but he knows how much you can handle. Oh, I love the illustration and the teaching and uh, the word that declares in Luke 22 concerning Jesus and his conversation with Peter. Peter had been bragging about Jesus, I got you, I ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, ain't nobody hurt you, I'm gonna ride or die, Jesus, I love you, uh, are you with me, are you riding, are you really, okay, anyways, so... He's doing all that stuff, you know, and talking about how much he got Jesus. And Jesus said, look, Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, the devil desires to have you that he may sift you as sweet. But I prayed for you, watch out, that your faith fail not. Can I get a witness in here? Do you even understand what it means to be sifted as sweet? When I look at that analogy, of course, we know that wheat can be sifted in many ways. It is really to be uncovered. When wheat is sifted, it is uncovered. Yeah. And that's what the devil desires to do, is to uncover you before you mature. Uncover you before you grow up. Come on, talk to me. Amen. So the covering is a cocoon for life. And everybody needs covering. Oh, Lord, help me say that. Everybody needs covering. You learn two scriptures, now you're ready to pastor. No, everybody needs to stay sometimes under that cover so you can grow up and mature and develop. Can I get a witness up in here? So it says, Peter, uh, Satan desired to have you that he may, what does he want to do? He wants to have you. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil don't like you. He just wants to have you. Yeah, he wants to have you that he may sit you as sweet. He says, but I have prayed for you. Why? That your faith fail not. In other words, he's simply saying, when you come back to being Peter, oh Lord have mercy, that rock, strengthen your brothers. I love that about God because he is not uh, looking at us as though it's over because we've had some struggles. Look at him, looking beyond Peter's fault. And he says, when thou art converted. We need to have that kind of hope for our children and for, for your spouse, you know. Your husband may be crazy now, but look at him and say, honey, when you're converted. Amen. You're going to pay this rent. Amen, somebody. When you, look at your wife and tell her, when you converted. You're going to wash these dishes around here. Tell your children, when you get converted, you pick up this bed. And I'm about to help you get converted. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> Say, when thou art converted. Understand something. That's what happens in the struggle. You ought to learn how to get closer to God. That in tests and trials sometimes make you go after God a little bit more. How many had some good trouble? Help me say, I've had some good trouble. And that's what we have to have, that understanding to know that in every situation we go through, find God in it. Help me say that, find God in your trouble. Whatever your difficulty is, because all things work together. Say that all things work together. That word work means all things produce. They are productive. Every time something happens in your life, it ought to be bringing about some sort of growth or advancement. Let me say it's not in vain. Next time trouble comes, say, come on, I've been waiting on you. I'm ready to step up a little bit higher in life. Amen, somebody. Trouble's going to happen, but you got to know how to happen to trouble. Stop telling God about your trouble and tell, tell your trouble about your God and let your trouble know that God can do anything but fail. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible says that the steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down while the Lord holdeth him up with his hands. 
So your steps are ordered. God's desire is not to kill you. Because you have trouble, don't stop coming to church. Hello, talk to me. Brothers, just because your money get funny at the church, don't stop coming to the state meeting. You know, people shy away when they don't have money. You can't give what you don't have, no way. Just come here and wave your hand and say, this is what I had it. Amen, somebody. But don't stay away. You don't know who's going to bless you in the house. Say amen, somebody. You can come to church broke and leave with all your bills paid. Because sometimes God got the blessing waiting at the house for you. Somebody shout yes up in here. You never know what word of encouragement you'll hear that'll make you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and start all over again. Is that right, somebody? So you take it one day at a time. Say that, take it one day at a time. Trust God in every situation of your life and watch God work it out for you. Is that right? We're looking at our story text so that I can move on. We're looking at our story text because I understand the schedule and there is a value in your journey. Right? The steps of a good man are ordered by God, so therefore, there's a reason for your season. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. The Bible does say, in everything, what? Give thanks. Why? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, right? When I was a youngster, I said, I was preaching, you know, you don't thank God for everything because the Bible says in everything, give thanks. But you can't read half the scripture. The rest of it says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So you not only thank God in something, you thank him for it. See, you can thank him in it, but then you got to thank him for the reason of it. Because whatever I'm going through, whatever we're going through, there is a purpose behind it. Can I get a witness in here? Notice in the scripture, uh, the text that I gave to you in Genesis shares that uh, Jacob is in the midst of a struggle. He's on the backside of the mountain and so on, and he is wrestling or having what we call a theophany, an experience with God. Have you ever had an experience with God where it was only God? No one else could have done this. It had to be God. Can I get a witness in here? Well, you know nobody else. You know, people say something told me. No, you know when God is talking to you. Can I get a witness in here? And so he is wrestling with an angelic being, but it's not his first time in a struggle. If you remember, before he was born, Jacob was wrestling. Where my Sunday school people at? Before he was born, he was wrestling where? Where? In his mother's womb. What happened? God had told Rebecca, of course, um, that... Um, uh, you have two nations in your womb. This is before ultrasound. So God had to let her know what was going on inside of her. You got two nations in your womb, but he tells her that the elder shall serve the younger. Right? And so here is Jacob, who was born the second, wrestling with his brother Esau, trying to get out first. Is that with me? Are you with me? So here he is wrestling, trying to get out first. Apparently, he didn't hear the word. Because the word said the second son was going to rule. He's trying to be first. When you look at somebody and say, wait your turn. He's trying to get out first. And so there's a struggle going on in the womb. Of course, he didn't make it. Because whatever God says is what's going to be. He got out second. Esau was first. But what Rebecca did is she kept trying to help God out. You got to be careful that you don't make favorites out of your children. I can't get no help up in here right now. Tell somebody don't make favorites out of the children. So you don't know which one is going to be that's going to have to feed you soup when you get old. I know you're talking about Billy Bob got that good job in California. When's the last time you saw him? Three years ago? Well, who's at the house with you? That's George at the house. So he's still working at McDonald's. But he's bringing you some hot fries every day. Say amen, somebody. So you got, you got to learn how to appreciate <laughs> what's in front of you. Look at somebody say, love all your children. 
Don't make no difference between them. Are you hearing me talking? God had told her that the youngest one is going to be the one that's going to take care of y'all. So she's favoring Jacob. Lord have mercy. Now why in the world would you name him Jacob anyway? The name Jacob means supplanter, trickster, one who tries to get in front of another. You got to be careful what you name your children. I don't care how tall and long your son was or whatever long he was or how many inches he was when he was born, you can't name him Goliath. He was an enemy to God. Say amen somebody. So here they are naming their child. It seems as though they're naming him a curse because God didn't give them that name for that child. Can you imagine every time somebody calls you, it's like, come here, trickster. Come here, schemer. Come here, can't wait on your turn. Amen, somebody. And so the Bible lets us know that here he is all of his life being mentored by his mother to be a trickster. And he's trying to trick his brother out of his birthright. Catches his brother at a weak moment, amen, and, and, and then uh, sell, causes him to sell his, his products to him and, and this, that, and the other. And so here he is in this place where he is trying to be what it's not time for. Oh, I wish I could find somebody to talk to here tonight. Say amen, somebody. So the Bible lets us know that he's going through all of these episodes and his mother, long story short, even because the father now has gotten somewhat weary and he's blind now and it's time for him to bless the son that he feels he's the blessed according to tradition. Let me help you now because even though God's word says this and it looks like things are going the other way, God can fix it whenever he gets ready. The word fulfilled means to cram something in. And God can fulfill his word. Even when you think you're out of time, God says, I got enough time. I can do it when I get ready, whenever I get ready, and wherever I want to do it. Look at somebody and say, God can do anything. Well, the mother is scheming with him again because Esau is a hunter. He's outside boy, right? Jacob was around the house, yeah. Esau smelled like outside. My wife told me one day, ooh, you smell like outside. I said, you smell like inside. Amen. Jacob was an outside boy. He was a hunter and he could cook wild game. And so the mother knew that the father wanted some good venison to eat and she's tricking her husband through her son. Oh, what kind of evil manipulation is this? Let me tell you something. When you can't wait, you will manipulate. I need you to help me preach just a little bit. I'm going to get out of here. Look at somebody and say, you can't wait. You will manipulate. Say amen, somebody. You got to wait your turn. Is that right, somebody? You got to wait until God makes the way for you. Can I help you? God loves more than just the other. He loves all of us. But you got to do it his way. Can I get a witness in here? So the Bible lets us know that here, Jacob now, his mother said, put on some, some animal hair, some wool on your arm because your brother's hairy. Want to trick your daddy, right? And so you can get the blessing. And all of this happens, right? He, he got all this manipulation and tricking from his mama's side. Excuse me, ladies. Right? And so the Bible lets us know that the father now blesses Jacob. Esau comes in and sees that there's been something going on. There's been this conspiracy against him. And he's out now to kill his brother. The mother says, I can't let you kill my favorite son. She sends Jacob off to her brother, uh, away, uh, Uncle Laban, and he goes to live with Uncle Laban. He didn't know, though, that tricking ran on mama's whole side of the family. <laughs> Look at somebody tell him, you got to reap what you sow. You can sit up here and shout all day long. When you can do shouting, you got to reap that stuff. Is that right? That's why you got to sow some good seeds now because you still got some bad ones going to still come up. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. What happens now? He's staying at Uncle Laban's house and he's there and he sees his cousin Rachel. Uncle Laban has his two daughters. One is older. Lee is older. Rachel's the younger girl. And Rachel is beautiful apparently because here uh, Jacob says, Uncle Laban, I want to marry Rachel. He says, well, work seven years and you can have her. He worked seven years, y'all know the story, and, and here, it must have been a night wedding or something, or it had to be a night, or, or they covered up like, he done slipped the wrong girl in the tent, 
Look at somebody and say, ooh, we slipped the wrong girl, the oldest daughter, because it's been hard for her to get married. And part of the daddy's job was to get the daughters married off. You don't hear me talking. So he said, we got to start from the oldest and work our way down. And Jacob didn't find out till the next morning. And when the lights come on, he said, good God Almighty. And notice, he goes back to Uncle Laban. Y'all have like y'all never heard this before. He goes back to Uncle Laban and said, you tricked me. I wanted Rachel and you gave me Leah. Notice what the uncle said. Work seven more years and I got you. Look at somebody say, tricking is on that side. Did he do it? He worked 14 years just to get the woman he wanted. Did you hear that, ladies? He worked 14 years. Did you hear that, young ladies? Just to get the woman 14 years. My question is, what did your boo have to do? You don't like nothing I said so far. I ain't heard nothing, Doc. That was a good one right there. Tell somebody, ask them, what did your boo have to do? So she had to be extraordinary. She had to be beautiful. He worked 14 years, and he now gets her as his bride. But what's happening now? The Bible lets us know that he's gotten to this place where he's sick of being Jacob. So you'll never stop doing what you're doing until you get sick of it. He's sick of being Jacob because he had to experience being tricked himself. And sometimes you'll never learn, amen, how to be better until you experience some of the pain you cause on somebody else. Oh my God, help me and hear somebody. I wish somebody was praying for me. Look at somebody and tell them it's coming up again. Now be careful what you say about me and what you say about other people. Look at him and say, it's coming up again. So here, the Bible lets us know that he's tired of being Jacob now. He says, he says I want to get things right with my brother. I've been out here now over 20 years, and, and I want to get back with my family. And I want to reunite with my twin brother, and, and i got to fix this. And the Lord has blessed him. He has these wives and he has women servants and has many other servants. He has all kinds of livestock and wealth and material and so on. God has blessed Jacob. But he takes everything he has. And he says, I want to find my brother Esau. But a messenger tells him that Esau is also looking for you. But he got 400 soldiers. So you got to be careful who you listen to. See, so you got to be careful because you're trying to come back and they said they don't want you back over there. You got to be careful who's giving you the information. Can I get a witness in here? So here he is now. He's concerned because his brother, from what he hears, is out to kill him. And he gets all of his belongings, his wealth, and his family and all. And then he's headed in that direction. But when he finds out that his brother it has 400 soldiers, he sends them across uh, the creek or the brook to Jabbok. And he goes to the other side and begins to go to God. As the text says, he was left alone. Sometimes you got to get by yourself. When you turn to somebody and say, sometimes you got to get left alone. Come on, touch somebody and say, leave me alone, leave me alone. Sometimes you got to get left alone. You got to get by yourself sometimes. You got to get by yourself sometimes. You got to get to that place where, where you're seeking God alone because there are times you can't pray in the microphone. Look at somebody and tell them that sometimes you can't pray in the microphone. You got to do what Jesus said. Get in your closet. And when you have shut the door, talk to your father in secret. Look at somebody and tell him, some of this stuff that I'm going through ain't none of your business. And so what he did is he got to this place of prayer. And as he began to seek God, the Bible lets us know that he encountered an angelic being. And this angelic being, he began to wrestle with him. Because he saw that his blessing was in this being. Sometimes you got to get to the altar until the change comes. 
Look at somebody and say, you can't leave the altar too early. You got to stay there until God does. God does what he wants to be done in your life. Oh, Lord. And the Bible says while he's wrestling with the angel, that the angel said, let me go because the day breaketh. And I hear Jacob saying, I can't let you go because I don't want to leave him like I came. Touch somebody and say, I can't leave the convocation like I came. I got to get something out of all these services. I got to have God do something new in my life. You ain't helping me. Go get somebody and look at him and say, I'm getting somebody here tonight. Oh, I'm getting somebody here tonight. So notice the Bible says that while he's wrestling with him, and how we know it was God, it just wasn't some man, because the Bible said that the being touched him, and it knocked his hip out of joint. He didn't hit him, he touched him, and that's all God's got to do, is just touch you. How many of y'all know that he touched you? And when he touched you, the taste of cigarettes dropped out your mouth. When he touched you, the desire for alcohol left out of your spirit. Tell somebody, when, when he touched me, I became a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Lift your hand now and say, Lord, touch me again. When he touched him, 